Hello, Beaver Middle School students. We are so glad you are able to join us again for Lesson 2 of Unit 3, Ratios and Proportional Relationships. Our last lesson, we talked about ratios. And just remember that ratios are simply a comparison of two things. Today, we're going to talk about a special kind of ratio called a rate. Find your guided notes and please fill them in accordingly. A rate is simply a ratio of two quantities that are measured in different units. A special kind of rate that we're going to talk a lot about during this unit is called a unit rate. A unit rate is a rate that has a denominator of one unit. Below are some examples of unit rates. These are the three different ways you could write them. We have 15 miles over one hour, and the way you would say it is 15 miles per hour. 15 miles with the backslash also means 15 miles per hour. And then finally with the words, 15 miles per hour, where per means for every one unit. Let's try an example of finding a unit rate. This example is about kudzu. It says during peak growing season, the kudzu vine can grow 6 inches in 12 hours. What is the growth rate of kudzu in inches per hour? First, we're going to write the rate comparing the inches grown to the hours it took to grow. Now, I know that, and I highlighted it in my problem, because inches comes first and hours come second. So when we write our ratio, we are going to compare inches to hours. Next, we're going to go back to our problem and find the numbers that correspond with each unit. So we have 6 inches and 12 hours. So I'm going to plug in a 6 in the inches position and a 12 in the hours position. Next, we're going to rewrite the fraction so that the denominator is 1. And the only way to do this is to divide by the same number that's in the denominator. 12 divided by 12 will give us that 1 that we're looking for. Now, We've learned this in the past, but we want to keep this ratio equivalent to the one we're writing. So whatever we do to the bottom, which we're dividing by 12, we need to do the same thing to the numerator. So 6 divided by 12, if you're not sure what that is in your head, you'll have to come to the side and do some computation. Since 6 comes first, we've learned first come, first serve. So the 6 is going to go inside the house, and the 12 will go outside the house. Let's add a decimal and a zero, because 12 will not fit into 6. Shoot your decimal straight up, and 12 goes into 60 five times. So the answer is 0.5 inches for every one hour. Again, this rate means that the kudzu will grow half an inch each hour. Now it's your turn. I want you to press pause on your video screen and try these three examples. Good job. Now check your work. For the first one, dollars comes first and hours come second. So when we write our unit rate, we want to put dollars in the top of our ratio and hours on the bottom. You always want to write it in the order that it's written. We have $54 in 6 hours, and we want to convert this ratio to a unit rate by writing an equivalent ratio that has 1 in the denominator. And the only way to do this is to, to divide the top and the bottom by 6. 6 divided by 6 gives us 1. Again, our denominator is hours. And 54 divided by 6 is 9, and that's our dollars. So this is $9 per hour. The next one, we have miles in our numerator, because that comes first. Days will be in our denominator. 68 miles in four days. So to find the unit rate, or how many miles they went in one day, we're going to divide the top and the bottom by 4. 4 divided by 4, of course, gives us that one day that we're looking for. And 68 divided by 4 is 17. So this unit rate is 17 miles per day. And then your last example, 
We have cups in our numerator and servings in our denominator. So we'll fill in a 2 for every 8 servings. We want to convert this to a unit rate, so we're going to divide the top and the bottom by that same number that's in the denominator. 8 divided by 8 will give us our one unit that we're looking for, that's one serving. And 2 divided by 8 is 0.25. So the answer is 0.25 cups per one serving. Next we're going to talk about average speed. If you know the distance traveled and the travel time for a moving object, you can find the average rate or average speed by dividing the distance by the time. This is a formula you will need to memorize not only for this unit and this subject, but for other subjects as well. You'll see this formula a lot in science and in math. A lot of teachers like to abbreviate, so you'll see R equals D over T. The average rate is your speed, and that's equal to distance divided by time. Let's try an example of finding average speed. And we're going to use that formula, R equals D over T, where R is the, is the average speed, is the speed. The skater took 2 minutes and 30 seconds to complete a 1500 meter race. What was the skater's average speed? First, we're going to use our formula to find the speed. So I'm going to write R equals D over T. And then we're going to just fill in the things that we know. Now we know the distance is 1500 meters. So I'm going to put that in the numerator of my ratio, or my equation. The time is 2 minutes and 30 seconds, but we have a problem here. We have minutes and seconds. So what we need to do is rewrite the time so that the units are the same. Two minutes, we know that there are 60 seconds in one minute, so we can do 60 times 2, which gives us 120 seconds. And then we'll add those other 30 seconds for a total of 150 seconds. Always make sure your time is in the same unit. Our last step is to divide 1,500, first come, first serve, divided by 150. That will go one time, 0 left over, and 150 goes into 0, 0 times. So the answer is 10 meters per second. That is the skater speed. Now sometimes you're going to have to compare unit rates, especially if you're trying to find the best buy. This example has to do with pasta. It says the store sells the same pasta for the following, for the follow, in the following two ways. Excuse me, 10 pounds of bulk pasta for $15 and 2 pounds of packaged pasta for $3.98. To determine which is the better buy, find the unit price for both types. So we're going to find the unit price by doing the cost per pound. So we're going to have our cost in the top of our ratio and our pounds in the bottom of our ratio. For the bulk pasta, our cost is $15 for 10 pounds of pasta. Now to find the unit rate, you simply want to divide by that same number that's in the denominator, because 10 divided by 10 is what's going to give us our 1. Again, this is our pounds in the denominator's position. Now whatever you do to the bottom, you've got to do to the top. So 15 divided by 10 is 1.5. So that's $1.50 per pound. That's for our bulk pasta. Now we're going to look at our packaged pasta. Again, we're going to put the cost in the numerator's position, so the packaged pasta is $3.98, and we're getting 2 pounds, so we'll put the 2 in the pounds position. We're going to divide the top and the bottom by what number? You guessed it, 2. Very good. 2 divided by 2 gives you 1, and 3.98 divided by 2 is $1.99. 
So for the packaged pasta, you're going to be paying $1.99 for every pound. So by looking at these two unit costs, you can see that the bulk pasta is the better buy because it is cheaper per pound. Okay, now I want you to try these two. Press pause on your video screen, try the problems, and then press play and check your answers. Good job. Now check your work as I do it as we do it together. The first question says, what is your average speed? So right away I know I'm going to be using that formula that we learned for speed. Rate is the same as speed, so the speed equals distance over time. Our distance in this question was 550 feet, and our speed, or I'm sorry, our time was a minute and 40 seconds. Again, we want this to be in the same units. We know that one minute is 60 seconds plus the 40 seconds for a total of 100 seconds. So our time that we'll put in the denominator is 100 seconds. And finally, you're just going to want to simplify this. You can find the unit rate by dividing the top and the bottom by 100. So for every second, 550 divided by 100 is 5.5 feet. The, so the average speed is 5.5 feet per second. Number two says, which of the following is the better buy? Two AA batteries for $1.50 or six AA batteries for $4.80? Again, we we're looking for the cost per battery. So we're going to put our cost in the numerator and our batteries in the denominator because we want to figure out what's the best buy per one battery. So let's start with the two AA batteries for $1.50. We're going to put $1.50 on the top because that's our cost, and we're going to get two batteries for that cost. Now to find the unit price, you need to divide the top and the bottom by the same number that's in the denominator. Two divided by two gives you one. That's your one battery that you're looking for. And $1.50 divided by two is 75 cents. So for our two AA batteries, I'll now just make a note it's going to cost us 75 cents per battery. Now let's find the unit rate for the six AA batteries. 480, and you're going to get six batteries. So we're just going to divide the top and the bottom by six. That's going to give us our unit rate of one battery, because six divided by six is one, and then we'll do 480 divided by six, which is 80 cents. And that was for our six AA batteries. So the question said, which of the following is the better buy? And of course, the two AA batteries is the better buy because it's only 75 cents for each battery. And that concludes today's lesson. Congratulations. See you next time.